It's a kitty gang show on Scarbox Nation TV. It's the Kitty Gang Show on Cigarbox Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Giddy. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. of the Giddy Gang Show. As you can see, I'm by myself here on stage. We do have our intro producer and Hi guys. co-host this week. <laughs> co-hosting. He's not on camera right now, but trust me, he will be because this week is a very special week here at CB Giddy. A thing has been done which has never been done before at CB Giddy. This is true. I I shoot you not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're glad to see all of your names out there with us. Rusty Taylor, who shot me some good news about the uh, Georgia Cigar Box Guitar Festival coming up a little later this year, that the lineup is all set. It is happening. That's good news. Mark Madding out there from Missouri. Mark Madding, hey, Missouri. Mark. Marcel Aspers over in French. Jimbo Burt, the one and only. Roland Marchand from Utah. I was thinking about you the other day, Roland. Uh, uh, thinking about how you keep asking us for a one finger lesson songbook or one finger song songbook, uh, the Glenn Watts style where you can play the whole song with one finger. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that here today in a bit uh, because it turns out you've already got everything you need to play pretty much any song in one of my songbooks with just one finger. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, we got a lot of great videos to share with you. But I tell you, this old steamer trunk guitar is really smelling like an old steamer trunk today. It's a little warmer here in New Hampshire. We haven't hooked up the in-studio air conditioner yeah. yet. So it's going to it's gonna get a little swampy during today's Giddy Gang show. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Dude soup. Dude I mean, soup. Yeah. Dude Giddy soup, soup on the what? menu. Um, but yeah, we're glad you're all at Max Wiedenheft out there. It was good to see you. Marty Tober, Sue Messias. Rick Scripps and Mike May over there on YouTube. Yeah, buddy. Thank you guys for joining us over there. Simulcasting. We're glad you're here. All right. 
So, uh, a lot of great videos. A couple Shane sent us some that you've all sent in. Good things. A um, couple of things to talk about. Uh, personally, last Sunday was very special. It was the first in-person Irish music session uh, that I've been at in 60 weeks. 14 months since we had our last one down there at Kara's Irish Pub in beautiful downtown Dover, New Hampshire. So that was great. We all went, sang, sang our, our throats right out, by God, and played and had a grand old time. And as I was standing out in front, before it started, I, uh, a train went by, because the train tracks are right there going through downtown Dover. And it was an old freight train moving slow, and some standing there with some musician friends, and I see something go by, a, a, little, a little piece of artwork uh, in a corner of a boxcar, and I recognized it because it is actually a hobo tag, a rail rider tag that I've seen many times before in Ohio, all over the place. Uh, the name of this particular hobo, or modern day hobo rail rider, is the Freight Bandit. And seeing that roll by there, when I was already in a bit of a sentimental mood, you know, it was kind of like seeing an old friend roll past in a way. So I got all inspired and I wrote a little blog post about it, which I don't think has gone live yet. Uh, I think we have it scheduled. I wrote another blog post this week. I've been in a little bit of writing mood, trying to dust off some of my writing chops in preparation for this train trip I have coming up, which is going to be very heavy on the writing. Uh, but I wrote another little blog post this week, which is live, about a photo that our good buddy Ken Hope sent in, or posted on Facebook. Uh, if you're one of the, a member of the Friends of Giddy group on Facebook, you've probably seen Ken's posts. Uh, he, he likes posting pictures of what song in my songbooks he's working on that day or that week. And he's got a great little picking spot uh, in his backyard there, right up against the house. He's got his rocking chair and his music stand and his favorite cigar box guitars there. And uh, it just inspired me. It's the sort of place I see an image like that, and that's just the sort of place I'd like to be, you know? It looks like, looks like home to me. Um, what's the first video we can run there, Nick, to Why break up my blabbers? Cigar box serenaders, those magnificent boomza boomzas. I tell you what, uh, Brett Gardner and the boys down there in, in New Orleans had another collaboration with Glenn Andrews, the amazing singer. Uh, I believe it's another Dr. John uh, tribute song, uh, and he sent it to us this week. We cross-posted it. Maybe you've already seen it, but it's the sort of thing that's worth seeing again, by God. So uh, we're going to crank the monitors here in the studio as it plays and, and tap our toes and snap our fingers along with you. So we'll be right back.
Yeah, buddy, good stuff. That was man. awesome. That, that voice. Kind of singer that you just listen to him, you're like, man, why do I even bother? But uh, thank you, Brett, for putting that together yet again. I know there's more really great stuff on the way. Uh, Ken Hope just chimed in out there. I want to tell you, Ken, the, the photos you post every time I see them brings a, a smile to my face and, and warms the heart a little bit. It means so much to me that folks are out there making use of these songbooks uh, that I've created. I was just in there working on the next one, mandolin, sea shanties arranged for mandolin. Got 12 or so more sea shanties that I'm adding to it that weren't even in the last one. So, all right, back to Roland. The fact is, Roland, you don't need a separate songbook dedicated to one finger songs. If you've got one of the existing songbooks, it can easily be converted for one finger. Now, in my songbooks, all of the songs are either in the key of G or D or C, and they all have the chords right up over. I don't have one handy. Oh yeah, right, right the chords on the side of the neck, right? Sorry, I got ahead of you. So you know, it's you can't see that, but it's got the tablature, it's got the words, and it's got the chords. If you've got a piece of paper and a pencil handy, here is all you've got to do. And we're going to start with A. So as you know, chord letters go from A to G, right? If you see an A indicated there is a chord, ignore if there's a little M after it that means A minor. Ignore if there's a little 7 after it that means A7. Just pay attention to the letter. Write a number 2 over that A. And that's telling you 2nd fret in one finger style. All right? Uh, you won't see many of them, but there could be a B flat, a, a big B with a, a smaller B up over it. Uh, write down a three over that, third fret. If there's just a, a B by itself, or a B little M, or B little seven, write down four for fourth fret. If you see a C of any form, it'd pretty much just be C or C7, fifth fret. If you see a D, a D minor or a D7, 7th fret, you won't see an E flat in any of my books. If you see an E, E minor or E7, 9th fret. If you see an F, that's the 10th fret. And you have the option for G of going all the way up to the 12th fret, just to get a little different sound from open. Because if you see a G, uh, that's you write a zero over it to indicate open. So here's G. Now if you were to see a C, a letter C chord over, you go up to the fifth fret. G would be a zero, and then D a seven. So you can convert any one of my songbooks to one finger style just by remembering that. A equals 2, B equals 4, C equals 5, D equals 7, E equals 9, F equals 10, and G equals 0 is the easiest, or 12. So, hopefully, you won't need a separate, or feel that you need a separate songbook, because, uh, and you can use that same conversion for pretty much any song you find on ultimateguitartabs.com or any of the many sites out there that have popular songs with the chords, you can convert it. Keith Rierick asks both three or four string. Yes, if the four string is tuned to an open G chord. All of this is based on GDG or GDGB tuning, open G major chords. It will work for like other 151 as well, although the, the locations of each named chord will change, right? Well, yeah, it, it would work, although what you're effectively playing is different from what... Yeah, it's a different octave. Yeah, but you know, whatever. Would it work on a ukulele? No! Ukuleles are not tuned to an open chord, um, so you have to use fingered chord patterns on a uke. Um, all right. I think, I think we have made a breakthrough here today, and that's cool. Uh, Michael Capato saying it should be a blog post. 
I'm pretty sure it is somewhere, but we could refresh that and do a new one. Um, yeah, so it, it's on, it really it's that it's that simple, just that simple conversion. And as they're saying, and it's been said before, you can write those numbers. Or even the letters, if, if you want to get away from the numbers and start using the chord letters, you could write an A here in between the second and third frets. You could write a B, a C, a D, an E, an F, and a G. And then, suddenly, you know, you're starting to think in terms of chord letters instead of numbers. What fret number do I put my finger on? So... And you can also use what I just told you, because this one, when you're playing chords with one finger, you're effectively using your finger as a slide. So what I just told you about trans transposing uh, to where you put it on the, the guitar, if you were wearing a slide, you could do the same thing by knowing what fret number to go up to. So there you go. A little bit of something something for you. What else do I have? I don't know. We got a show for you today, though, folks. What's the next video in the docket there, Nick? Shane's got an interesting technique on how to make things look like curly maple. Yes, a faux curly maple DIY method. Uh, you maybe have seen some of his posts uh, that he's already made on this, but if you haven't, it's good stuff. And of course, we know, right, as, as DIY crafters, you take a hunk of, you take a hunk of, a panel of, of Arctic birch or white birch. It's not curly maple. We know that. You, everybody knows that. But being able to reproduce some of these uh, styles in a cool and inexpensive way is pretty neat. You can get some awesome effects, some awesome looks. There's always going to be somebody out there <laughs> ready to say, why didn't you just use curly maple? Wah, 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 wah. You, know, like, you know what? Shut up. Go away. Um, we're having fun doing what we like to do and trying stuff out and that's what this is one new thing to add to your tool bag uh, for how to decorate a an otherwise bare and undecorated guitar so here you go that looks fantastic Hey guys, it's Shane Spiel. This video shows how I got this cool curly maple look on this CB Giddy Hubcap Howler guitar kit. This was my inspiration for this whole project. Just an old Stella guitar. I love these guitars. But they were cheaply made and the tiger stripes on them were painted on. So I looked up how to fake a tiger stripe and I found a few YouTube tutorials and I've turned them into the tutorial here and it turned into curly maple looking striping. Now you can use this technique on solid body guitars, you can use this on any types of wood projects. Here is the quick version of it. All this technique is, is you're wrapping the wood with wire. Then you're taking a torch and you're burning over it so that it gets lines then you add a dark stain this one has english chestnut now i'll show also the neck in this video i used the light stain i don't like the way it came out but at least you see how it looks here again just wrapping with wire burning with a torch and then hitting it with stain one thing to note as i started this video i called this tiger striping as the project went along, you'll see my wire started twisting and it created a different pattern than I originally planned. And I realized the look was curly maple looking, not tiger stripe. So that's why I started out in the video saying tiger stripe and then I eventually call it curly maple. Thank you to my old Stella for the inspiration. Thank you to CB Giddy for the hubcap howler kit that you sent me because it has inspired me and taught me a new way to finish instruments. So let's take a look at this technique for doing fake tiger striping on this giddy kit. Uh, what I have here are all the box panels that are on the exterior. I don't need to tiger stripe the interior pieces. So you have your top, the bottom, the sides, and then I also have the neck 
and the little butt end of the neck that comes out of the box. So what I'm going to be doing is, this is just cheap mechanics wire. I bought this, I think I got this at Harbor Freight, and it's probably some of the stuff you find right at the front cash register. It's just real cheap little wire. And I'm going to wrap this wire around the wood. Once I'm done, I'm going to take my cigar lighter and I am going to just burn over top of the wire and what it's going to do, the wire will act as an insulator and keep it from burning where the wire is. But I also want to make sure whenever I'm wrapping this wire around it, it is a little uneven to look like natural wood tiger stripe lines. So let's get to this. So there we have it. It's very simple. In fact, this one little side took up most of this wire. It's okay, we can reuse the wire for every panel. Uh, everything is mismatched. There is no rhyme or reason for the way I put these on here. I wanted everything to be looking natural. So let's uh, burn this and see how it comes out. Yeah, there we go. That's giving me the striping that I'm looking for. Check that out. Alright, let's finish it up and do the rest of the panels. Okay, now that I've burnt, I'm going to take some stain. In fact, I got this Minwax English Chestnut. It has a bit more of an orange-brown color in the stain, which I think will add a nice different touch to the dark burnt areas. What we're going to do is just add a very small coat of stain over top of this. And there we go. So you have the natural striping. It's not exactly tiger striping. I'm sure if I used a plumber's burns a matic torch um, and not just my cigar torch, it would have more distinct lines. But uh, I'm pretty happy with the way this is coming out. I can't wait to see the whole guitar. And whenever I put a polyurethane finish on this, man, that sucker is just going to pop. Okay, here's something unexpected. As I'm reusing the wire, there's some areas that got crimped as it went around other panels. While well, these crimpings seem to be hitting in the same spot as I wrap it around. And here's a side that I just did where these crimpings are now looking even more authentic as tiger stripes. So check that out. Very cool. Okay, just a quick video update here. Uh, this is the original the original panel I showed and that's a dark chestnut stain. I was curious and I had another uh, giddy box kit and I did a quick little burn just on one quarter of it but I used a an oak a light oak stain and man that it's really starting everything really is coming out like curly maple. And that's because the wire I'm using continued to get twisted and bent and kinked. And it really gave such a cool look. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue with the dark stain for the body. But for the neck, I'm going to wrap the neck, burn it. And then when I use stain, I'm going to use this lighter stain. And it'll have a nice contrast to the body. Ooh, all right, I'm liking this, boom, whoa, whoa, yeah boy, look at
look at that. That looks fantastic. Okay, so we got the neck. It's all nice and routed on the back. All right, so I'm going to wrap it with the wire here. But one of the things I'm going to be very careful about is wrapping it too tight. Because if this wire starts digging into the side, you're going to get little nicks all over the fretboard. Um, also, whenever I burn it, I'm going to be very careful on how I burn it. Because you don't want to burn it deep where the fret ends are and then you start getting fret ends sticking out because the wood is contracted you just want to add a nice little char and nothing too deep so let's wrap the neck and burn it I ran out of wire, so I'll have to, uh, once I'm done burning this, just move some more wire to get the last couple inches. One other thing I've been doing is still using this cigar lighter. I really should have gotten like a um, creme brulee torch or a plumber's burns a torch. But this is all I had was my Drew Estate cigar lighter and holding it down really hurts my thumb after a while so I took a little piece of uh, zip tie made it like this and I pull it back here and it holds it down as I just hold the zip tie let's burn this sucker There we go. I just need to do this last little bit up here, but it's going to be cool to take the wire off and see how this has come out. There we go. It looks like a giraffe right now. Man, I hope I hope this is going to come out okay. I'm thinking I may need to sand this a bit so it's not as pronounced being that this is the first one I may just let it as it is and put the stain on and go with that let's see what happens what do you think yeah I'll probably sand it a little give it a bit of a relic a little bit of a worn look I'm going with it I'm gonna just look at this let's Cross our fingers and hope it comes out okay. At this point, I put the rest of the kit together and then I added a ton of polyurethane. I probably put six coats on here and I can tell you polyurethane really makes these lines pop. The finished guitar is much better than I could have ever expected. I can't believe how convincing this curly maple job is. Shane for putting all that together. It is a cool method. We've been brainstorming about jigs and things that we could cut on the laser to make it easier. Different patterns, different things. Pretty cool stuff. Um, uh, a couple of things I wanted to say. Uh, I, you probably noticed I'm up here on stage by myself. Our good buddy, good buddy Danny Woodman uh, took the day off. He got a second shot yesterday and was feeling a little poorly this morning. So he took the day to get all rested up and recuperated so he'll be back with us next week also uh, i saw betsy heron out there presumably scott somewhere nearby um 
I have been asked uh, by the owner of the brewery downstairs whether we would like to do an occasional show from uh, the brewery in front of the tanks there set up, sing a few, play a few. Nick's nodding his head. Uh, and I thought that might be a great time to uh, invite Green Heron back and uh, have a bit of a live audience out there. Yes. In addition to the... Where do I sign? The online audience would be a good thing, yeah? So we're looking into that. Definitely want to... Now that, uh, you know, I, I've seen several people mention they've got gigs. Louie and his wife, Deborah, have a gig. Jim Morris has one. Scott and Betsy Green Heron got one coming up. All sorts of good things. Maybe this is the year I'll gig. <laughs> Play a gig. Uh, probably not. They're all gonna laugh at you. They're all gonna laugh at me. <laughs> Shane, uh, Shane might be coming up to Giddy Land in the near future. Maybe that would be our first, uh, <laughs> first brewery gig. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've seen Shane. Yeah, all of us. Aside from that nice 13 We're minute We're going to have to have a cigar right this time, Shane. A quick sea song. I've been working on this new sea shanty song book. Call all hands to man the capstan. See the cable running clear. Heave away and with a will, boys. Pull our home and we will steer. And we'll sing. Joyful chorus in the watches of the night, and we'll sight the shores of Ireland when the grey dawn brings the light. Rolling home, rolling home, rolling home across the sea, rolling home to dear old Ireland. Let's, let's, we gotta uh, hurry because we got a whole nother thing. Oh yeah, let's let's uh, let's toss it over to Michael Capato. Michael Capato, who's out there watching right now, doing a little picking and grinning. Yeah, he calls it trashy porch blues. All um, right, I'm ready. All right. A little trashy porch music for a spring afternoon if it even sounds good.
Very nice. Thank you for that, Michael. We appreciate you sending that in to us. Some good stuff. Um, what was next? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't print out a script today. I don't know if you've noticed. Like, ah, I got it all up here, up here in the uh, the brain locker. How hard could it be, right? Um, well, why don't you uh, come show the people the things? Okay, let's go He's do it. He's got thing. some things to be shown. Uh, that's quite a build-up. <laughs> I'm gonna bring on it. Bring up the other mic over there. Hey, look who it is! Hey, it's a headless. It's a headless Nicholas. I uh, <laughs> apparently taller than you realize. Taller than I realize. So we've got a thing that took yeah, forever to I'm build. I'm gonna actually adjust a wee bit here. All right, all right. Well, further back. There she is. My first fiddle. A cigar box fiddle, huh? Yep, I bought the parts uh, on the cheap. Figured, why not throw it together? Box was one that uh, I had found while mucking about while we were moving upstairs and it was so a little too bold. But... Why did you choose that box? Let's start with that. Long, thin. Um, I, I was talking to... Ah! Still oh. in shot. Yeah, yeah, actually. I was talking to Jim about it, um, and it's actually I really liked that the other one was a punch box, so that was a subliminal, subliminal thing as well. Oh, yeah. And really, it was just the narrowness of the box that I really uh, latched onto. I figured it would give me room if I needed to cut out the sides. I wouldn't need to cut out too much, although I don't think. Well, you'll you'll find that out when you start. Hey, folks. Hey. Um, Scooping the sides when you use a wider box like this one that Jim Morris built, um, getting it so that the bow can come down far enough to hit the low G and the high E strings, if your box is too wide, I think you'll probably be all right. Yeah. Maybe a little scoop. But anyway, um, she's ready to be strung, huh? Yes, I believe so. Tailpiece with the fine tuners on it. Correcto mundo. Oh, you know what? Uh, the uh, fine tuners are actually, I think, still out on that. There's pieces that's oh, yeah. down in top. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I've got a nice song and dance. I can <laughs> Sorry. Apparently, small parts. Um, so. Dealing with the fiddle, you know, it's got the tuners up here on the headstock, and you probably all already know this, but I'll repeat it. You know, a guitar, a cigar box guitar, you tune it by turning the tuners up here on the headstock. Usually geared tuners, right? Well, on a traditional fiddle, these pegs are tapered, and they are not geared. So usually on a fiddle, what you'll do, find them? Yeah, good, because I didn't have anything else to talk about. No, um, on a fiddle, friction you kind of push and turn and push and turn until it sticks and that's your your rough tuning and then you use these little fine tuning doodahs so on this one which is pretty close to in tune you can hear if on the high e string if i tune turn the fine tuner i'm not touching these up here the pitch goes down goes up. That lets you really dial in the exact pitch. Now I've probably messed this one up. These, these little fine tuners are finicky as heck. Yeah. Close enough for a cigar box, eh? Hey? Alright. So Apparently. it's fairly simple. I imagine it's just wrapping it around the post and then... Well, yes. I have a actual uh, conventional, slow down, conventional fiddle somewhere around here, almost messed up. Um, basically, I think you just poke it through and then turn it a few times. Or Jim, Jim knows these things. And Betsy. We've got a couple of fiddle players. I'm going to bring the comments over. So. I think it's out on the... Uh... Is it out on the wall? A live stream. I said to uh, Jim, I said to Nick while uh, that last video was going, like, I have no idea how long it actually takes to stream <laughs> a fiddle. This could go horribly. Yeah, so we have another Shane video, but. Yeah, we got 15, 20 more minutes of Shane. 
Um, well, we'll get it started, then we'll run the video where Shane really puts one of our new hubcap howler kits through its paces. Uh, and then we'll come back and see how far our neck so has gotten. It, so Jim actually supplied the strings and the bow. Thank you, Jim. I'd start with the low G. The, the black? Yeah. And this, is it GDA, GDAE? GDAE. So if you kind of keep that from coming loose, you just kind of, I don't know how much of this you can see. How many, <laughs> how many giddy guys does it take? Oh, okay. So the ball just kind of goes into the little notch. Oh, your nut's not notched. My nut's not, not oh. He's got an unnotched nut, folks. All right, well, we're going to, oh, you know what? There's a, <laughs> there's that or that. You know what we need is one of those diamond files. sets of giddy so diamond I'm put files. put Shane on. Where's Shane Spear? You don't need to see us mucking about here. <laughs> oh, we'll get I this thing up. I bet they do. I bet they do. Yeah. But, uh, all right, I'm going to go put Shane on. So what we're going to do while Shane's showing off how good he can play everything in the whole world, <laughs> we're going to be, we're gonna be uh, getting these strings on and notching the nut. And, Jim, nothing heavy, but we're going to use the nut that you notched on yours as a general guide. Uh, one thing, Jim, before he, before he hits go, on yours, there's a little wider space between the second and third strings than there is between one and two and three and four. Is that intentional on a fiddle? Because we don't know. <laughs> All right, here's Shane. We looking here's a little messy del bucket just shaved his beard off again the guy's got the best hair guys quite honestly this is a father's day gift if anything else This was fun. This was a heck of a lot of fun. It is the CB Giddy Hubcap Howler Guitar Kit. It's loaded with CB Giddy's Paint Can Lid Dobro Cone for a great old time sound. I just built this over the weekend and I've been having a blast with it. know I've built so many CB Giddy kits probably seven or eight if not more over the years and I've got to say I think this is my favorite it's simple there's no electronics it's all fully acoustic and I just love the sound of it uh, the action is extremely low And it plays phenomenally. It was easy to put together. Now, whenever I do CB Giddy kits, I customize a few things. Uh, and I did this special curly maple finish on here. This is not how the guitar comes. This is a technique I found on YouTube what you're gonna need is some wire, a butane lighter, or a butane torch, and some dark stain. I've got a full blog, and all the details you're gonna need, check out the description below, and I'll show you how to do this. It was really cool. This body started out as white birch, and by the time I got done with it, it just, you tell me that doesn't look classic. Now the neck, I tried to do it with the neck too and this was one big complete failure because I used a lighter stain on it instead of a darker stain. So instead of curly maple looking it just kind of looks like giraffe spots. But that's all part of building your own guitars. You try new things. Sometimes you fail, sometimes you nail it. <laughs> Uh, 
I enjoy building instruments from kits. Uh, so this one was a lot of fun. When you get one in four strings, it is tuned G, D, G, B, G, D, G, B. And I have a lot of lessons on how to play four string open G on YouTube. <laughs> I have a choice in making a fretted cigar box guitar, especially with some sort of dobro cone. I always go for four strings. That's my own preference. Some other features. Uh, it's fully fretted. You don't have to add frets. Fret dots are screws, and they came already in there so the neck comes completely done the only thing I really changed on it was I added this little piano grand piano scroll it's sort of reminiscent of the Rezo Electro I built that has the same type of scroll just wanted to have a little fun and change up the headstock the conventional giddy headstock is rounded like this. So all I did was shape it a little and give it my own personality. I always round the back of the neck or I at least gave this like a V neck. I use a router to round the backs of my CB giddy necks. Okay, so CB Giddy kits come with these squared off necks. When you get it, the whole neck is just like one big rectangle. What I like to do is I use my router table to route out a curve on the back. Right now with this one, I used a simple straight routing bit to give me a nice little V there. When it's done, it gives you this. And I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna sand this. And after I sand it, I put my hand on it and I just kind of shape the whole neck to fit my hand to make it feel good to me. I'm still working with this. There's a few things that I wanna tweak on, such as here. I'm getting a bit of a fret buzz on the high string and it simply has to do with the bridge needing tweaked a little bit and that's kind of the fun of building your own instrument. Uh, with this I may put a very extremely small shim on the bridge just to lift it up a little like that and that will get clearance for the high string. Uh, was this something that was at fault from CB Giddy? Probably not. It is humidity. It is, you know, next move. Every one of my guitars back here needs to be tweaked every once in a while from humidity and just the environment. One of the things I hope CB Giddy does, and this is my nudge, nudge, hint, hint, wink, wink to them, is it would be cool if they would sell a second bridge for this kit that was just a little higher so that it would be a slide guitar. Uh, they made this thing so well that the action is so low. It's perfect for fretting. It feels like an electric guitar. Other features are it comes with the cool metal corners, really adds a nice look to the guitar. It's got this uh, barrel trapeze tailpiece the whole thing just looks fantastic. It looks authentic. It sounds like 1937 and I'm just having a blast with it. And again, this fake curly maple finish inspires me because it looks like a 1930s instrument and it makes me want to play the old deep 30s blues. So I do want to thank cbgiddy.com for sending me this kit and I had a blast making it. Guys, quite honestly, this is a Father's Day gift, if anything else, um, whether for you or 
for someone else's old man that likes music and likes to tinker, this is a Father's Day gift. They sell at CB Giddy for 110 bucks for the whole kit, and you're going to have a blast making it, and I'm having a blast playing it. So, thank you, CB Giddy, for the kit. Uh, you're not getting it back. And... <laughs> I love it. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also, for more of this stuff, subscribe. Maybe now I can learn how to play as good as Del Puckett. That was the... Hey, we're back! <laughs> Brace yourselves. Mike May on YouTube says this is the most fun he's had since the hogs ate his little brother. Oh boy! That's a whole lot of fun right there, folks. You know, I, oh, lie. That, I don't think that's gonna fly. It's it's getting closer. We got two and a half on there. Something fierce. I found some extra, uh, some actual uh, nut files because I couldn't find one of our <laughs> sets of diamond files quick. It's going great here, folks. I ain't gonna lie. Well, that looks good. Sure, why not? Let me get a slot in there while you get this. Oh, you already did. Six a little high. Filing another man's nut. Oh boy, I don't let this to see. What kind of show is this anyway? It's a family show. <laughs> Absolutely it is. All right, the final string, the high E. He's gonna throw a bridge under there and by God, the Lord's work will be done. And... Jim Burke wants a Giddy Gang coloring book. I think, Jim, retirement uh, might be running a little thin for you, I ain't gonna lie. Well, Jim, <laughs> learn how to draw and send us a bunch of coloring pages and it's so easy, right? Mm, even a caveman can do it. Is that the thinnest 16, one? Yeah. yeah, 16 is probably what you want. I think I stopped getting live comments, but or they've given up on us and stopped commenting. Wouldn't blame anybody. Call on hands. Two string fiddles are a thing, Jim says. Yeah. My God, look at that. Do you know what scale she's supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, 13. Oh boy. Lay it a little too tight. Yeah. I'll give you some breathing room here. Oh. Oh boy. Hold on to your onions, people. If you don't have an onion, an onion will be provided for you. Oh. Ooh. So this needs to come back. Yeah, oh. and you don't have enough room. Well, then that just means this won't work. Well, I have to build this out a little more. Or I can tighten this. Scale length! You could gain a half inch, but you need more than a half inch. Yeah. Call all hands to man. Well, she'll, yeah, she'll tune to G. She'll tune. It will. It's kind of like a, a shorter scale. Um, your your fretting guide won't. Yeah, I know. So I'll end up having to. It's got sound. Hmm. Well, at least we can tune it up to GCA. Yeah. That's what I found, Jim. Four four. I don't think we have. Do we have life on it? Four. Yeah, it'll be more like a. I don't know, what do we get, about 11 and a half inch scale? 11 and 7 eighths, so almost 12. So yeah, a little, little short scale. But the good thing about a fiddle is... Strings, strings will end up a little loose. Oh no, that does go. 
Hmm. Yep. I'm not doing a thing? Well, no, it, it is. I just, I don't know if we'll quite be able to get it where she needs to go um, with it being that. Yeah, because you got such a short string on these that making it the shorter scale means it has to be looser to hit the lower note. No, oh, that's true. And it's pretty loose. So looks like I'll have to I'll have to extend the, the piece out here. Yeah, put and I can tighten a bigger there. heel on it would certainly, or heel, whatever you want to call that bit back there. Well, there's a G and a D. You know, I saw a movie once, and Stradivarius was in the movie, and he had the same problem. Oh yeah, yeah. Good yeah. movie, a little dated. Was it on a rotoscope? Let me go check comments while you're. <laughs> oh, there's. I I don't think I'm getting live comments anymore on my phone because I have a feeling things are being said. <laughs> just just to guess. Extend the heel, yep. Play with your ears. Yep, move away. Yeah, we're not getting lives. Short scale will work. Yeah, I haven't seen any of those. So the, the marker is just a, uh, is actually a decal that I got. Cheating. Cheating. I tried to cheat, but you know, a cheater never prospers. Cheater so. McCheaty face. I, I might be able to get one badly played tune out of it if I can just get this high E to stop being a very bad word. That ain't gonna go. Thanks, Sue. I'm glad our misfortune is... Oh, yeah. yeah. Sue, I wanted to say <laughs> well done on those uh, tambourine banjos that you built. I enjoyed seeing that. It's that same style that we're looking at for our uh, kit of that. Basically suspending a... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get... Suspending a, a small diameter tambourine inside a wooden box to use as the resonator to make that, that classic banjo sound, right? You... Are they already stretching too much? Or are the pegs slipping? What? There's, there's so many good things happening. <laughs> nothing, nothing could go wrong. So, there's nothing everybody enjoys more than listening to some poor jackass tried to tune something. <laughs> Why? So, uh, hey, look, it's a minute after four. What a fortuitous <laughs> discovery. Well, you saw you saw the struggles here at the, at the end here. Uh, Listen, build yourself a fiddle. It's so easy. <laughs> That's the only advice I have to give everybody. Uh, but see, I'm also, in addition to being pretty dumb, I'm also very stubborn. And I want to hear this thing make a little tune, but I think the pegs are slipping. I can't get that eight. It needs a little rosin. Best show ever. Come on, Keith Rear. What is it? The greatest, the greatest show ever. The greatest show on, on the, the interwebs. He knows. I think he's just being nice. All right. All right. Well, you this know, is the face I make when I give up for now. Chuck, 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 back chuck, to the drawing board. Chuck, chuck. And I'll, I'll actually <laughs> extend the heel and. Uh... Yeah, there's a couple of tweaks. I'll get her sorted right out. A little bit of. A little bit of uh, rosin. A little bit of rosin on the pegs that, that don't want to stick quite as well. So so easy. There ain't no trouble. Well, here we are, you know? <laughs> can hope y'all's copy can work without bad words. I was, <laughs> we better cut this show before I start cussing up here. 
Hey, it makes for great content. I'll send a, a hello out to our good buddy Deke and Lulu. They're camping. I was just invited to uh, go up and do a little camping tonight, but I don't know. I gotta go pick up an actual camper tomorrow. Spotted to keep.